I didn't know we did a fuck. I didn't know we did a 6 p.m. show on Wednesday. Is that new? No. I'm... Oh, hi. OK, so sh- should I uh, should I do the intro? <laughs> do the intro. No, I just want to say one thing. Hi, Mayron. Hi. OK, um, so I, I'm ready to do the intro. No, I just want to say one thing. The most uh, the other important reason not to talk over each other is because it makes it very difficult for the listeners to follow. Uh, it, this is my first time doing a podcast. I'm not talking video, to you. So. <laughs> All right, you you'll get you make okay. your point. Listen, but- listen to me, Nicole. If I go like this, you Wrap mute you mute his mic. I'm not playing because mm-hmm. I know. No, listen, if I mean, if I go like this, I'm giving Noam the finger. Okay, because. because <laughs> Because I mean, even if all, what the, he says is wrong, I don't think what he said is evil. It's no, it's Hold absolutely on. sinister. Hold on, what, is that him? No. The Brian, who's, who's that? This is the worst angle for Hold me. On. Hold on, also. Wait, here's the thing. The other Be, not, first of all, Mehran is difficult to to corral uh, about you know anything. Mm-hmm. But this is a su- this is a subject which he uh, understandably is, uh, feels takes personally. I so. don't understand why this asshole even wrote this article. Okay, okay. I don't want to hear these. These. Listen, you cannot call him names. I can't call him an asshole? No. He can say that there's such a thing as a gay and gender, that the gay and gender propaganda exists, but I can't call this guy a fucking nimwit. You don't know what an ad hominem attack is? You attack his arguments. You did not call him names. Uh, Someone should call him a name. No, no. Some, there has to be some proportional deterrent for goofballs to not run hold their on, mouths hold, hold about May, bad signs. As a personal favor to me, but this is a guest on my show. Do not call him names. You made him a guest on my show. Mehran, no, that's my show also. Oh. It is. Then MC it. I won't MC <laughs> it. I'll get someone instead of you. Yeah, if you already that's already going to happen. OK, so can we okay. start? I have a okay. 640 spot since when are we doing 6 p.m. shows on? Wednesday? I don't know, but I'm worried about this. I'll let him in. Let him in. OK, uh, let, should I start? Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. This is live from the table recorded at the world famous comedy cellar in New York's historic Greenwich Village. This is Dan Natterman. Oh, also, I should note that this is coming at you on Sirius XM 99. Raw dog. <laughs> and on the Laugh Button Podcast Network, Dan Natterman here along with Noam Dwarman, owner of the world famous comedy seller, back from his vacation in the great state of Maine. Noam, I assume things went well in Maine. Things went very well in Maine. We have with us via Zoom from the city of Tel Aviv, meaning uh, Spring Hill, I believe. Uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, she is coming from actually from Ramat HaSharon, but that's a suburb. Uh, Periel Ashenbrand is with us, and she's a producer of our show, uh, or at least... uh, that's what she calls herself. We have with us Brian Kaplan, an academic. And uh, I, I believe he's performed here before. No, he performed at our uh, um, new joke night. Oh, that is interesting. Two weeks ago. That's right. And Two weeks ago. We have with us also comedy seller, regular comedian, Mehran Kagani. It's such a pleasure to be here. Guys. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Uh, this this should Hi, be Ron. a heated discussion. Hi, uh, please, uh, let's all. Uh, who said it's Keep emotions. Why would it be heated? Okay, can I Do say decide a... and let's hear each other discuss. I, I want to say a few things be before we begin. Mm-hmm. First of all, uh, uh, I want to um, acknowledge that that Professor Kaplan did a set at the Comedy Cellar. I wasn't there to see it, <laughs> but did you see it on tape? And I saw it on tape. Oh wow! And um, uh, I, I admire his uh, courage, and it, he, he had a. It went very, very well. I would say that I I thought you were more at ease actually in the in the tape that you gave me. I, I sensed a little bit of uh, butterflies. Uh, that maybe maybe I'm imagining it, but um, all in all, what was your reaction to it? That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, thanks so much for making this personal dream come true, Noam. I. We've been wanting to do it for a couple of years and I just like trying new things and you let me do it. And I, and I got to start at the top. That's cool. Well, is it something that you would try to do again? Or is it, is it, is it yeah, one like, like, like if, if the opportunity presented itself, I'm not going to go on the road and leave my career and family, but <laughs> knowing that it hardly works out for anyone, but uh, yeah, I would definitely try it again. If uh, people were interested, sure. There, there's a thing that stand-up comics seem to have where they get something that that nourishes them in some way about being up in front of an audience and telling these jokes. Do you feel that that's in you? Were you, were you moved by that in some way? Yeah. I mean, you know, like I'm already a public speaker. I do that professionally. The main thing that's different is just the level of memorization that I thought I needed to do for comedy. 
normally I just ad lib everything and I don't. Prepare. Brian, if you're interested in getting into the business, uh, I'm willing to sell you my entire act. Wow. <laughs> right. And I'll, I'll throw in, I'll throw in my, uh, rare book, fake excerpts, uh, sketches. <laughs> Right, and yeah. a set of steak knives <laughs> for three million dollars. <laughs> like about seventy-five percent uh, of the audience oh, well, that wait, night wait, at wait, New wait, Jokes wait, was was Mr. K was Professor Kaplan. Check on Professor Kaplan. Brian's was Brian's. It seemed like uh, he kind of sold out the room. Okay, so he had a lot. Oh, of Brian, what do you, what do you so, say so, for my to my offer? Yeah. I'm Oh, how about and I will give you six you months of best stuff for free, and then I'll decide on the six months of personal coaching. I will throw that in as well. Yeah, wow. well, like, let's start small with with a with a free gift, and then no, never mind. Well, okay, then, <laughs> that was, that was, the offer was what it was. And um, by the way, if anybody in our audience is amenable to that offer, please let us know at podcast at comedyseller dot com for comments, questions, suggestions, and to accept my offer, which is, I think is a good deal. Is this going out live as well? No, no, no. So okay, so let so so let me so anyway so so I mean I was going to put it out there so Mehran. Uh, he was uh, he was annoyed, frankly. I was the, I was the MC for let, that show. Let me, that you let, were let me, let me, let, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. He was the MC, that. and he and he was annoyed uh, by the the fact that you wanted. And I, and he um he he said something to me. I, I can look up the. Uh, I'm happy to catch everyone up. No, no, so, no, no. I didn't, didn't ask you that. Uh, and, Brian, uh, when you went on Mayron, stage, please, Brian, Jesus one second. Christ yes, almighty. yes, yes. I'm going to. You have to I'm, read. You I'm, have to research, and I'm about to give it to I'm you. I'm going to control the show. Okay. I, I mean, it's like you're meat shielding this. I, I, maybe that's meat shielding. What does that mean? As in, you're throwing your entire body in the way of something actually interesting. <laughs> okay, so, um, he said that. Uh, hold on. So, uh. So, so, oh my God! Now you, you threw me off, Mehran. But anyway, he he claimed that you made some kind of remark about something gay or whatever. And I said, I said that doesn't sound right. Oh, for the love of Christ! And, I, allow me, no, because you really you dragged that one. He went on stage and said, "Who remembers the '90s?" Which is just a, a <laughs> dreadful <laughs> premise. All right, all right. And then, right, who remembers the '90s? Right, guys. Terrible. Well, I, and I, then I, said, I don't think that's before, in before he said before gay and gender propaganda. Is that what he said? All right, Those so, are his exact. So, so, so I went. I went back and watched the set. Hold on, and and I and it, it it seemed all like just like funny to me. I didn't I didn't take it at all the way Mehran because you did. wouldn't hold on. So then I realized that I didn't realize that you had written an article recently about the fact that um uh that you believe that the science shows that there that there is some uh, acquired uh, homosexuality. Yeah, acquired homosexuality. And Mehran being gay um, takes this personally. And, and it, having worked in public health, and, writing for Larry and, and Summers, I'm and, not like, well, first of all, he, he, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Okay. Is angry about it. And uh, now, Mayron, I should tell you, Mehran is, is a smart, very smart guy. He worked with Larry Summers. And um, he's- uh, Ashish Jean, Atul Gawande, okay. Arnie Epstein. And, and, and um, so against kind of my better judgment, I'm going to allow him to have it you. I don't, I don't know. It's not, have but, but, him. but, but please, Mehran, please. Be kind. No, I don't give a shit if you're kind or not. Be as ruthless as you want to his arguments, but we're going to have a civil conversation. That's the, you're, you're, you're jumping in the way of something that hasn't even okay, happened. Okay, so, so, so can he go first, Brian? Can I, can I just address the yes, issue that yes. remember the 90s, yeah. is a bad premise. I disagree that it's a bad premise. A lot uh, of comics checking with the audience being like, who remembers the 90s? Am I right? All right. This is OK. You also have to remember that was his very first time doing stand. -up. I respect that. And and so, you know, I'm going to get I, I have to give him a little feedback. So and and I respect that that it was his first time. And I think the cellar is a great place to to start at the top. So then opening going from that segueing into gay and gender propaganda and propaganda is a pretty loaded word. Brian, right? Depends. <laughs> I'm sorry? It depends. It depends. Like, uh, you know, Nazi propaganda about Jews. That was propaganda, right? Saying that cockroaches, rats, untidy effect on neighborhoods. That's a that's a less than savory use of propaganda. Yeah, we're probably right. Because it's public, it's public health propaganda. Uh, but propaganda means that that the it's founded on deceit. Right. That is the definition of propaganda. It implies deceit. 
see. There's perhaps a connotation of deceit, but no, it really just means that you are giving people an oversimplified and one-sided view of things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong or that you're intending to deceive them. The, it literally, it definitionally implies deceit, but I'm, I'll, we'll, we'll sh we can, we can shelf that. What? So you feel that there has been uh, pro propaganda, information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used or misleading promoting nature, or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. So mm -hmm. that's uh, the the first definition of a misleading nature. No, pr pr biased, mm -hmm. especially of a biased or misleading nature. Mm -hmm. that, so you know that that's not exclusively. I'm so not glad exclusively. And bias is not this. And we bias, should we should leave as bias, many cracks to hide in as possible. Well, and and I think I think biased is uh, what Brian is kind of saying. When you, when you simplify something in order to lead people kind of by the nose to a conclusion you want them to have, I'd say that's propaganda. You can do that with truth. Or with, with falsity. That's how I would say. Mm. Um, you agree with that, Professor? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least he didn't uh, bring up something controversial about the '90s, like grunge music. <laughs> there it is. What's all this? There it is. I was talking about the '80s. The '80s. Okay, and then right. So the '90s certainly had a degree of homosexual and and gender propaganda. Okay. Do 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 you, Mayron? Do you want to listen? You, you you read his article and you and you have an intellectual beef with it. Let's get to the intellectual. Well, I want to hear where he's coming from, Noah. You read his article. I did. I his article. That's the, where he's coming the, from. The shoddy the, the the shoddy data article. We'll get to. Oh god, god. But, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, and it, it is. It's it's just it's the it's founded on shoddy data, like a single Gallup poll, but then like doesn't take big picture stuff into account. Well, we'll, we'll get to be it. specific, and then he can answer you. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to ask is yeah. what is gay and gender propaganda? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, we can we, we can go back to the definition the definition we're talking about. So yes, information, particularly of a of a biased or of a biased character, trying to get people to go and end up with the same conclusion that you're trying to push on them. And what is that as it relates to homosexuality? Um, well, is there any big mystery about this? I'm puzzled. No, but I, I want you to articulate it at least. And of course, there's a mystery to it. Right. Let's see. Uh, for example, it would be bias. It would be propaganda to say that here's the official position. Homosexuality is entirely genetic. And this is now what we're going to tell everybody. Right. And there's a lot of evidence that is not so. In fact, but that isn't that isn't like so suppose uh, you go to a school and you put all over the school saying every uh, that you are that you are born gay. This is the only way any, that anyone ever is gay. And then you act like there's no other view or there's nothing to discuss. That's propaganda. The, your article said you wrote a book on genetics, right? Uh, yes. OK, so uh, uh, l let's go to the article, right? You talk about acquired homosexuality, yes. right? Acquired medically, the definition of it being that that's anything that is diagnosed after birth, right? That is acquired. Well, you just say there's anything that is not entirely genetic. Uh, anything that isn't identified at birth. Yeah. So, for example, of course, I mean, most things are not diagnosed at birth, but it can turn out, oh, you actually have Huntington disease. We had no idea until you were 50, but it's still. Well, what about uh, uh, Brian? Can I, can I call you Brian? Mm. Uh, what about what about hormonal uh, factors in utero? Would that be considered? It's not genetic necessarily. There's some data around that. Yeah. But would that be acquired? Absolutely. Seems like, yeah, like, of course. So your, your definition of acquired for purposes of this discussion is anything that's not DNA yeah. encoded. Yeah. Is there any reason to believe that homosexuality is DNA encoded? Yes, absolutely. Uh, to some degree. That's the important thing. So I do have written, you know, anyway, if you're wondering why an economist is even talking about this, I did write a book on human genetics. There's been a lot of research trying to compare twins and their sexual orientation. What you see is that identical twins are a lot more likely to have the same orientation than fraternal twins, which is a smoking gun for a genetic effect. What you also see is that the concordance between identical twins for sexual orientation is much less than 100%. Right, but we, but we also know about incomplete penetrance, right? As a in genetics, you do genetics. Mm -hmm. So incomplete penetrance. What's incomplete penetrance? I never it is that the idea that so like when in you almost you genetically, go. in almost zero cases, in almost no cases, is there a hundred percent correlation between the manifestation of a condition and the presence of its gene? Mm -hmm. It almost never happens. Well, but it is incredibly rare. No, no, no. Yeah, it's not true. That is incomplete penetrance. I, I've never heard of identical twins that both didn't have the same eye color. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it is rare. 
I, I could probably list 20 things like that off the top of my head. The same hair color, the same shape of the nose, but they, their height differs within, you know, we're talking about school. Right. And you, you know, uh, do you know how big uh, if, if one, if one, like a, a gene, a if one identical is. twin is very musically gifted. The other identical twin is almost always musically gifted. I'm, I'm actually, I've never heard of time. They weren't both musically gifted as a, as a genetic reality. Incomplete penetrance is the idea that it, it is not a hundred percent. It doesn't but happen. It's noise, but, but it's close to a hundred percent. Then there's the idea of expressivity, right? I mean, Mehran, what you're saying is belied. It, it, it is, is that right? Right to the word belied by the fact that identical twins are almost impossible to tell apart. It means like every feature is almost a, a visually in front of you, 100% penetrance. That's why we can tell our identical twins. That they, they, they are still, they are this not. Is, these, are, these are not arguments against me. This is agreeing with me. Right. That, uh, no, I'm just certainly agreeing with you. I'm no, saying, I'm not. I'm, I'm, well, we're not I'm, we're not, I'm, I'm disagreeing with your fundamental premise that that. 100 percent penetrance that identical rare. twins are entirely identical in terms of like their parents have trouble telling them apart sometimes oh my god no um when you when you're talking about genes and brian please i mean i realize that you, you're not going to bite the hand that's protecting you but <laughs> i'm not you're I'm saying, with I'm, your whole body am i saying so, something <laughs> am i saying something incorrect about identical twins everybody knows identical twins. they're not this whole they move, are not this whole entirely movie. identical yeah. they, they do not turn out the exact same no, but there, but there is a reason we call them identical. So what is what is accounting the reason, for? What so the reason we call them identical is because they are genetically identical. Well, I don't know if we, we knew that, that before we called them identical. When we start going and looking at their individual traits, we can see that for different traits, identical twins normally have high correlations, but it varies a lot. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you'll see that identical twins will usually have a correlation of about 0.9 for height. That basically, you know, like a perfect correlation would be one. They're like 0.9. For something like intelligence or measure, measure intelligence, that'd also be like 0.9. For personality traits, it would normally be quite a bit lower at more like 0.6. Uh, so, um, you know, like there are, you know, you're thinking for things like eye color, there, I think it really would normally be 100% concordance. It's like they're both always going to be. Okay, have so you have, so you have, you have one, you have if one. If you were to really measure their eye color with a spectrometer instead of just saying blue, green, then you probably would actually find even slight differences there. Because there are, you know, like the, with the nose, like some person can break their nose and then it's no longer the same nose. So there are differences, but yeah, still. Can I ask you a question you, about you, that? You know, you know, like these are all examples of how genetics are not the whole story. And it's also true for, for sexual orientation that it is not the whole story. We can see that I know that if you look at two identical twins, they will not they will not have the same sexual orientation with 100 percent probability. For sexual appetite. What, what like I want to know. What I want to know. Wait, 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 I want to ask one question before we move on. Hmm? You say this is interesting to me. Point so point one is perfect correlation, right? Point zero uh, no, is so, no one 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 point zero is perfect. Oh, well, one, I'm sorry, one is one is perfect correlation. Yes. Zero would be perfect negative but, correlation. Uh, zero would be unrelated. Mm -hmm. Negative one would be perfect uh, opposite correlation. Okay, so zero, so yes. so yes. point six is still is still quite high. Yeah, point six. Yeah, point six okay. is you know, is still very you know, very noticeable. I mean, a good way to think about this is if you just were eyeballing the numbers, if you just you plotted it. You know, basically, when you're down to something like 0.1, it just looks like nothing to you. You need to do. You need to actually have a computer to see if there's anything. On the other hand, something like 0.6 would be really obvious, and like you know, 0.9, they practically look like the same thing, but not quite. There's just a little bit of, of fuzz in the data. Right. I knew. I knew. I, I forgot those goes to so negative the, one. I, I so those out. are. Yeah. Please. First of all, I, I wonder how the audience reacted when you said, "Remember that before gay propaganda." I can't believe that they weren't. Seventy-five percent of them were there to see him, okay, and they clapped okay. like stuck in. So go ahead. Okay. So, so anyway, my 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 other question is, is why is it con why is this controversial? E maybe Brian is wrong. Maybe being gay is a hundred percent genetic. Maybe it's not. Who cares? How does that change? How how is it? How is it a bad thing if 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 homosexuality were required? Why would that be a bad thing? That's interesting. Well. I'll why would that answer. be something I, I that know, people I know feel, an answer why would some that be something that people feel furiously uh, uh, uh about or uh, that that you know yeah, or that would it's, merit it's, it's a really, it's a really an good article question. there's there's some look so there's some sense where if it's genetic then it's just totally futile to try to change it so then there's no reason to try to change it whereas environmental at least maybe someone will get the idea of changing it that by itself is uh, really complicated because it's well wait a second just because it's not entirely genetic doesn't mean that you know how to change it or that you should change it. But I do think that the part of the reason why people are so- And by the way, just because it's genetic doesn't it, mean it's unchangeable. If you, if you can say that it's impossible to change, so don't try. 
that is a more comfortable argument than it's possible, but don't try be for other reasons. But so are you someone who studied human sexuality and behavior in a, in a deep and meaningful way? Uh, I have, I've studied the genetics of sexual orientation in a deep and meaningful way, but okay. I haven't thought about it. So, so that, then you know uh, about I expressivity. Yeah. Expressivity. Yes. I mean, the way right. we use it, yeah. uh, sure. Right. As in like colors and violets or uh, alpha thalassemia, yeah. right? Like the degree to which someone is anemic, it happens on a spectrum. The degree yeah. to which a yeah, flower yeah. is violet mm -hmm. happens on a spectrum. Uh, Brian, were you aware that you would be met, uh, uh, that you would be uh, uh, having an argument of this uh, intensity when but you someone when... you offended oh, don't start with that offended because who, my, gives, my... who gives a shit if you're offended that's not why that... i do and it's why i'm here no my, no, my, my general not... rule hold on, for... hold on that's that's really not fair what you're because because you know as well as i do that everybody's offended about everything today that's right the only question is can the man back up his article or I didn't not. assassinate him and, on social and, media. And, I asked to talk to and, him. And if, it's, it's like if, if, some, if I brought in somebody who is very pro-Palestinian and she wanted to make a case about what Israel did, mm -hmm. I, I'm offended. Who, what do you mean you're offended? Mm -hmm. You're not here to be offended. Okay. You're here, you're here to, 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 to be able to demonstrate you went from point A to point C yeah. and you made a mistake. I'm, abs I'm, I'm not shying away from the fact that it bummed me out. So, and so it why is why I asked to talk to argument and whether there's anything wrong with it so far. It seems like we actually agree. Well, the, but again, we're dealing with expressivity, but, but your statistics get weird, right? So you talk about I'm, I, I have your article in front of me and it, I've read it just too many damn times. <laughs> um, Strangely, it is the most viewed thing I ever wrote on my new blog. Because it's because it, it's salacious, and I have okay. no idea so, why you gave a fuck can, about. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah. Okay. So, what do you what do you believe is the origin of homosexuality? Uh, I personally think that uh, it it lives in sort of a gray area. In like appetite and taste lives in a gray area uh, that perhaps has some genetic. Uh, origins. It perhaps has some environmental okay, so, causality. So, so if it has some environmental causality, mm -hmm. isn't that what he's saying? Hold on. He, Wait, he just said that. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But I'm saying no. I'm if saying specific has, appetite. If if it has some uh, environmental causality, does that mean in the way you raise your child, you might be able to put your finger on the scale in terms of whether or not they become homosexual or not? Um, OK, so what we know, right, is that historically deterrence, right, we've we've put in uh, in the 80s. Right. I actually have a fun little piece of data around that. But this is you should be able to ask this question quickly. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking a very, don't, don't a very basic me, no. question. Do you think that how you seven percent of people said that homosexuality should have been illegal in 1987? No, no, that's, that's, that, that is couldn't be less of an answer to my question. I'm asking you, Mayron, uh -huh. do you believe that the way you raise a child yes. can influence whether or not they become homosexual. Personally, I think that creating like open parameters around, you know, you can enjoy whatever you want to with a consenting partner and letting them discover what that means is probably going to lead to the healthiest relationship with sex and sexuality. I didn't ask you about healthiest. I asked you about you're not attracted to women, right? I've tried it. Right. And you're not attracted. I'm a little attracted. Okay. I'll play with a tip. A little. OK, but you're not. But you're would not. you play with it? Anybody uh, else okay, want to play okay. with a tip? You, I mean, you're you're, you're being, well, men have tips. But I don't like girl. I, you're not being, a man tip. You're I'm being coy man. here. I'm not being and, coy. and difficult. I'm being to pin incredibly down. direct. But I'm not. No, you're not. Because it's really. It's, I don't like girl lips and I'm not wicked into it's, pussy. It's really a yes or no question. <laughs> I, ha I have I have a child. Is I'm not. Is there anything? Is there anything in the way I raise that child? Yeah. Which could affect whether or not they become attracted to men I don't, or women. I don't think it could affect how they're attracted to it. I think it could I think it could affect how they end up expressing it in life. So okay. you, don't, you don't think it could affect? Huh? So you don't I, so I think so appetite the and attraction is so, so, so no, we don't just need to speculate about this. We actually got pretty good data on this. Too. Go ahead. We can take a look at sexual orientation of unrelated kids that are that are that are raised together as like, for example, with, with two adoptees and there we can see that there's all that there's actually a you know there's probably a very slight positive correlation, but not much. So it doesn't seem like just being raised in the same home has very much effect effect there either. It seems like it's something else that is neither in the genes nor in the home that really is mattering. And that was the point of the piece that I wrote where I said that we see an enormous increase in 
uh, in, uh, in non-straight sexual orientation over the last 80 years. Uh, the, again, the, uh, the, you know, the, the data that, uh, that uh, you know, they, were ta- they were talking about basically goes you know, to people that are, I think is old, oldest in their 80s and 90s. I mean, see that there has just been a massive change in self-identified sexual orientation. One story, like I say, is that people just feel more comfortable saying it, but the ratios are so extreme that uh, well, how about left-handedness most of what's going on how about left-handedness brian yeah. right mm-hmm. uh we're looking at you know the, uh it was illegal in albania well into the 70s right so uh th- there are there are time periods in american history where we show that we had zero left we had zero left-handed people in this country that was what the data showed and then as it became Wait, sort of, data on that huh is there data on handedness? Oh, well, absolutely. I know what, what Maron is getting at is he believes that people are more free to express their homosexuality. There. So he, that's he just why. That. I no, 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 no. He did. We, I'm reiterating. No, but he's saying that the numbers are really bizarre, that this is outre. So we went from zero to 12 percent and then we kind of landed on 12 percent with left handedness. Right. Now, now, then, but we didn't have to force it. We didn't have to massage it. But over time, when people were accommodated for being left handed, we eventually got to a plateau of about 12 percent. And left handedness is not environmental. It's just something you're born it's with. It's just something you're born well, with. Well, so it's actually, different than being gay. Yeah. Well, listen, Dome. So you think the people that were pre- that were pressured in Albania to learn where the right hands couldn't do it? I think after going and working on them for 10 years, they probably could write OK with the right hand. It wasn't didn't come naturally. But actually, you were able to change their handedness in probably most of the time. And, and what is the follow? No, no, and I, what I, is the I fallout say, for would, something I like mean, that? This is, this and is, why would we want to follow that? Hold that we're really digressing. But totally genetic. I, mean, I, I, I don't think we changed their handedness. I think we just got them to write with their right hand. Well, I mean, look, look if you were to just say, look, handedness by definition means that if you like, are you able to write in an illegible way with a hand? Then if you like, if you actually go and pressure kids to go and do it for 10 years and it comes out, they can write fine with the right hand. I say you have changed their handedness. No, I, w- I would disagree. They, with you that. I, would, I would disagree with that. Well, I don't want to get into a discussion of hands. No, but if I, if they, if there is a correlation here. Well, so there's, a, there's an analogy to be made, but whatever the whatever the data shows with handedness mm-hmm. is not directly related to what the data might show with sexuality. Do you believe, Brian Kaplan, that a child is not just w- with proper societal factors, not just that the that the child is more likely to accept uh, feelings that he had anyway, but more likely to develop feelings that never would have developed at all it seems very plausible to me it There's seems a lot of plausible life, but you can't never experience with... them you like you know, like look so like in, like opera say all right so opera i'm a big opera fan but if you've never heard any opera until you're 30 you're probably never going to like it now again you, one thing you might say is well people make you do it and you pretend to like it that could happen it could be you actually acquire a taste you know there if you again, if you look at and look at the data you'll see that there are many changes in people's sexual proclivities over time so you like so like as to why that couldn't be something that people learn and something where you've never tried and then you don't get you don't you don't get, you do not get a taste for it or you do try it and maybe say oh I don't like that or maybe you try oh I hadn't thought about that before maybe I do like it. I actually appreciate so the 30, 30 is a real number in in development and in psychology that uh, we tend to be pretty set in what we like and don't like in in. Uh, in our ways by the time we're 30. And that is especially true of safety, of safety issues, what we're conservative about, not conservative in the sense of uh, like politically conservative, but conservative in the sense of better safe than sorry versus say YOLO, right? Uh, 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 Right? So I'm saying that if a person leading up to the age of 30 felt unsafe about expressing something, they are likely to remain to an extent uh, feeling unsafe to express that thing. So if we're looking at 1987, where there's a 56% uh, consensus in this country that it should be illegal and prosecutable, or 1963, where it was illegal in all 50 states, that person who grew up within that environment, right? Mm-hmm. That person is going to feel unsafe. Even when the environment it, changes. Even when the environment changes, just from a developmental psychology level. Okay, let me let me let me let me zoom out for a second. Let's, unless you have something directly you want to answer about that, I want to. Brian, is it? I mean, I guess I would just say that I. The, you know, so look, I'm a professor. There's well, there's a way that I deal with ideas, and that is to put emotion aside and just focus on specific questions. This one is at a time, and I mean, look, I 
you know, I feel like Mayron really wants to go and deal with a lot of questions at once, and I don't think you make a lot of progress in that that way. Let, let me let me let me see what I'm saying. Hold you on, chose Mayron, one Gallup Mayron, poll. Mayron, right. hold it. Yeah, that's probably the best. That's the best data that exists on Earth. It right? isn't. Okay. Well, if you have better data, I do. Uh, can do you have it at, at on at my per? Oh, I have. Okay. Okay. I have. Yeah. Well, unless twenty three you- pages. Okay. So data. so with twenty three pages is not going to work. You're going to have to have. I one. I'll forward all of this okay, to you. You can forward to him. I want. I want. I want to zoom out for a second, because although I might seem, you might mistake my my attitude on this for taking a particular side. Hmm. It's not the case. And I'll say two things. First of all, just so everybody, the listeners know, I was always raised by my father's attitude, which was there's, n- there's no way to make somebody gay. My father didn't care how many gay people I hung out with. I, I let my kids hang out with anybody gay or trans. Whatever. I've, I've always just had this attitude like this, this is, this is baked New York in. City. This, no, that it's baked into their DNA or a postnatal environment. And, and I don't have anything. Who to, they are. And, and there's <laughs> nothing I can do about it. Now, now Brian's bringing data uh, that says, well, you know, it, it may be more complex than that. And, I, and I'm interested in that. But here's here's what I want to say. Zooming out. I understand exactly why this touches an emotional chord to you. And I imagine Brian does as well, mm-hmm. which is that you tell me if I'm wrong. That this kind of information. Wrong or right in the hands of the people who would uh do your community harm is is very dangerous can, and can cause a lot of suffering. If, I also if, just think if it's people, poor science. If people think, yeah, but let's let's just like for the sake of argument that it's that it's not poor science. It is though. Okay, but you don't know that. We do know. No, that. no, we don't know that. I we don't run this by any. No, no, we don't okay. know that. No more than we know uh, the truth about other. You want me to line up a panel of people who will just yeah, deconstruct yeah. this, but well, proper? I, can, I can line up another panel. Just just like, it. like it's, it's analogous to the conversation about race and, and uh, IQ. We don't know these things. They're very, very emotional. And they're very, very emotional because they can do a lot of harm to communities that have already suffered a lot of bigotry and harm. I get that. I imagine you get that too, Brian, right? You understand sure. Yeah, I, I think he's pretty low fucks given on that one. No, that he's no. OK with people being converted to right handedness. <laughs> no, no. And and but but as he says, like, so like I am left handed, I wouldn't like to have been done, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. Yeah. OK, but there are subjects like this, which are very, very fraught. Mm hmm. Which maybe the world would be better off if they if they never studied them, but that's not the way the world works. Oh, I love studying them. P- people who people who um have curious minds look into these things, mm-hmm. and um I, I I'm, concern- and, I'm, and I've always been torn about this kind of thing, especially in, in, this. I think is even less than than the race and IQ thing, which mm-hmm. I I really like. I read Charles Murray's recent book, and I and I and I really really rejected it, and I said, my God, this is really dangerous in my opinion what he's writing it didn't even and didn't even seem correct to me mm. but in the wrong hands it could be catastrophic mm. if everybody starts thinking that they can convert gays even if that's not what brian's saying mm. but if people if that's the, no but if that's the way it filters down into a less sophisticated mind mm. i understand why this is something you want to fight against in his article he likens it to mormonism like if a Mormon moves in next door and is cordial to you and brings over a pie, you might convert to Mormonism. Well, what, you want to answer that, Brian? No, I, I did say that. And it's a reasonable idea. No, like sexuality and uh, choice of spiritual practice are not the same. thing. So I, I didn't I didn't. And, and anyone would be able to dis- yeah. see the distinction between so, those two. So, Maron, I didn't do something on this uh, podcast that I really should have done. And I've always thought about doing it, and we should do it in the future, which is that I should have had you send to Brian in advance mm-hmm. the data that you wanted to refer to. I agree. And him send so, to so you. So, look, again, just to go back to what I actually said. Yeah. Here's what I said. Some people will never become Mormon no matter how hard you try to convert them. Other people are very likely to become Mormon even if you don't try at all. And then there's some people in the middle who are persuadable. And <laughs> when we look at the data on sexual orientation, it looks very much like that. Some Brian, people are going to be gay no matter what. Some are not going to be gay no matter what. 
other people are persuadable. Otherwise, Brian, the very that, idea that you can you learn to love sucking 70, dick is the most bisexual thing I've ever heard. Well, in my I, I want to ask life. you a question about that. Is we, it we different for men? Yes, yeah, 70 with a bisexuality over the course of five generations is multiplied by a factor of 75. I think Maron just uh, just imply that Brian might have bisexual. As in, if you could be convinced <laughs> that, oh, wow, this dick tastes great. You're kind of bi, my friend. By the way, like, is there a difference? Is there yeah, a difference between men and is I? I yeah. hold on. So is there? Like, it seems like you just aren't listening to me. I said there's there's three categories: uh-huh. people who wouldn't be gay, no, who would be gay no matter what. Yeah, people who will not be gay no matter what, and there are people in between. Is that wrong? Uh, but I think what you're also saying. Wait, wait, though, is it wrong? Huh? Yes. We're we're not there. No, no, no. That's what you do. What what it, he has it, said it, so far that there that there are people who no matter what that there are people who would are no matter what gay or or straight wouldn't partake in the other one, and then there's a group of people who fall in the middle, right? Yeah. And just like for Mormon, most research about I sexuality, I says that I stand by that. It's true. People's appetites and predilections run a very wide spectrum. Yeah. A, a so, wider so spectrum. Like you see me based like you're saying, totally it, it, Brian, can I ask you if it's possible, so given, given your research, is it or your your knowledge, is it possible that all that the difference in numbers, that there's fact that there's more people identifying as gay today is entirely because they're more comfortable expressing it? Is that po- a possibility in your estimation? It is possible. Absolutely. And I say that in the piece. It just seems that the change is too large for that to be the whole story. Yeah, no, you could, you called the number of bisexuals shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Multiply, multiplying by a factor of 75 over the course of a few generations. Doesn't that surprise you? Well, yeah, it actually hold, hold, doesn't. Hold it. Just, just to clear. So when you, when you use the word shocking, do, do, yeah. is there any connotation to that other than it's a startling statistical? No, no of course no. not. It's, okay. it's, it's, Numer- it's we've got five generations. We got traditionalists. In- These are people who were born before 1946. So for them, we've got 0.2% saying they're bisexual. Generation Z, this born is laughable. 1997, 2003. We've got, there we got 15%. That's 75 times the rate. But my, my sense is, my gut is it that this is because people are more comfortable Saying it, it's not just comfortable; it's that, safe. That, that's my gut. It's safe. It's, 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 I, I don't access to healthcare. Fifteen percent of people puzzling in about the- that. All right. So the social stigma against bisexuality has been less than that against being gay or lesbian. Will you agree with that? Uh, it it depends on where you look, but let me offer so this so because so uh, for up until the 70s started up until and including up until today, we still say MSM. Right. We we what's generally in, MSM? in in scientific literature, it's it's the it's men who have sex with men. Oh, right. Okay. As in. So uh, we it, it's literally we, we're not doing like our research around bisexuality is baby at this point in in terms of like we're we haven't done a lot of research on bisexuality. So putting that on, you know, to one side, we've generally looked at it as like men who have sex with men. And that's like where we start to look at the data. So we don't have a lot of research around bisexuality. And it would be great if you acknowledge that in your in your article. But then the other thing is that a person who is bisexual in a climate where it is unsafe to be you know, a homosexual or bisexual. And for the record, we still have 15% of this country that feels that uh, that it should be illegal. Right. D- current polls say that 15% of this country thinks that homosexuality Yeah, but I think, I think it's off base. I mean, I, it's not. I, no, I think I think it's unfair to bring that up in, 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 in to bring that to bear in, in, in a conversation but, of his, his article. But hear this. Because though. that, but that, because that animates why you're sensitive to this. No, but it's it not a criticism of his no, article. I'm, no, I'm, stop talking. The, here's the thing. If if a person is bisexual and they have the option, right? There's the optionality of being with a male or a female, or or being some with someone of the same sex or someone of the opposite sex, and there are uh, there are pressures against them to express their same sex desires if they are less socially accepted, if there's pushback, if they're less likely to receive health care, little things. Yeah, we we all that get- person is almost certainly not going to express their bisexual side. May run, may run. All everybody in this conversation has acknowledged, including Brian, mm-hmm. that this could possibly be simply the the end of because it's not stigmatized anymore. But he's also but, not but, acknowledging. But, the, but, but, but Brian thinks that the number has changed by a factor of such a high number. Yes, that that strains his his ability to, to believe. Zero that. to twelve percent is a huge jump. Brian wants to say, I can see them. So I mean, here's what's really puzzling. So if you, get, if you take a look at the numbers, you'll see that 0.4% of the oldest generation identifies as gay. 
2.5% of the youngest generation. So it's multiplying by about six times. Mm-hmm. But for bisexuality, it's multiplying by 75 times. Mm-hmm. Even though the stigma against gays was definitely a lot stronger back in the earlier period. So why is it that we don't see that the that there's a much larger increase in gay identity rather than bisexual identity? Well, maybe bi- bisexual ide- uh, being bisexual is very very is more common than we it's ever thought. And now thought. and now all those people have decided that you know what I can come out at safe now. Yeah, the, you know, the the problem is that in both cases we're talking about some people suppressing their true identity or hiding it because of stigma. And if the stigma was much less, then you would expect that relieve, releasing the stigma would lead to a much smaller percentage change. It's not a question of the percentage Why of the would we think that? that is. It's a question of the ratios. So again, we're multiplying bisexual identity by a factor of okay. 75 versus gay identity right, only okay. by a factor of six. That's weird. What is the well, multi- I, I just want to say, okay, just, okay. We're, we're gonna move on. I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, in my experience, um, and you, I don't know if the data shows this, women are different than men. I had a girlfriend one time who had been in a in a gay relationship before our, before our relationship, and uh, and she was quite resentful of the woman that she had the gay relationship with because she felt like she convinced her to be gay for a while. She said, "I was never gay," and somehow she convinced me to be gay, and I'll never be gay again. That's that's a story you don't really. hear. I was tricked into eating pussy once uh, too, and it's a story you don't really hear from men. This and even. Somebody else I know who's clearly not gay get got drunk and made out with a girl one time. Uh, women, they just that seems to you. Seems no, if to we were different. on ecstasy hold on, together, hold on. we'd have fun. Is there data about that? <laughs> yeah, sure. With women being more yeah. open to it, just like women's sexual orientation is more flexible, and we can see that again in the data. Where for let's see, the data is piss poor. Shh. Um. And I don't see why we need to go after the people at Gallup. I think they did a very good job. I don't know. You you grabbed this. one poll from Gallup. You want more Gallup okay. poll? Can I introduce, by wait, the way, so he might be, have something to say. Wait, everybody, just wait. All right. Let him answer. Let him. Yeah, so let's see. What we've got is the women have now tripled the bisexual identification rate of men. So, again, it seems like you know, there, there's at least a lot more flexibility there, right? And and there's something else that I don't know how to put it, but yeah, and actually the lesbian identity rate has increased by a factor of twenty over these five generations, whereas for gay men only six. Can you chart? Wait, I'll, I'll say what it. And this and this I don't know. And then then I'll be finished with this. No, there's something else about sexuality which um, clearly exists, which uh, I I and I don't know how it fits into the labeling of somebody as gay or straight. So for instance, men in prison will. Uh, get fully into having uh, uh, gay sex. Mm -hmm. Men, people will have sex with animals. Uh, they, they're not attracted to animals. You don't know that. Uh, apparently, they are. You don't know uh, their life. I, I don't. I don't think they're born with. Well, he's like, give me face. But but it's true that that people will get horny and have sex with animals. Does that are mean, we seriously turning this into sheep fucking? No, because I, I, I will. I, I absolutely am because <laughs> I, I'm making the point that. Just because this someone the Mormonism, <laughs> uh, but I really am making that point. What I'm saying is that just because somebody in a particular gets in a habit somehow of having sex with the with the sheep, which is common in the world, right, doesn't mean <laughs> that they're not a straight man. I don't. I I know what I'm saying. I had sex with tons of straight men. Actually, actually, yeah, maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> or who knows? Doesn't necessarily mean they could absolutely be yeah. bestial. What I'm saying is that people can Zero-files. people can have sex. I mean, I guess the way to put it is that. Just there's there's attractive there's being attracted to the same sex, and then there could also be just not having enough aversion to having sex same sex sex. That's that okay. you turn it down at a moment when you feel like having sex. So Do you know how many people no, who just like can they, you, they, they can you breathe for a second and think no. about think about what I'm saying. You you are, saying you are that, sucking the air out of the room with this. What I'm saying is that if I have sex with a man. It could be that I'm attracted to men mm-hmm. or it could just be that it feels awesome that I don't give a shit. I just want to have sex with something. Sure. That sounds pretty fucking bisexual to me. Well, that's I don't know if that's really bisexual. Hooker, it is uh, like, well, the, you know, every simple ability to practice and, and and enjoy some aspect of sex with both party with both. I have sex with the blow up doll. Does that mean I'm attracted? Yes, you yes, are. Yes, it yes. does. Yes, it does. I, I, I'm with. I'm if with. It Mar- has a dick. I'm with Marin on this. Mehran on this. I believe if you can have sex, uh, if you can have sex with somebody, you have to have some level of attraction. No, to, no, that's to, not to the that, case. That is not the case. To that individual, I'd like to, if I may, 
uh, introduce yeah. Justin oh, McKinney. Oh. <laughs> Justin. Is, speaking of I'm gay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Poor thing. Poor thing is so not gay. I don't, Justin, know what, I don't know what I walked into, but my wife still questions whether I could be gay. Like that still, that has come up. Like a couple, I've been with her for 27 years. You have very good skin. Yeah. Justin McKinney is a couple. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of that, but she, 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 really, she did. She watched one of those um, 2020s. Someone had a double life. She's like, I don't know. You know, I saw this thing. Someone had a double life. He had a family, but he was gay. I'm like, you got to go there. Like paranoid, uh, paranoid. So, so before before we leave this subject, I, and I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind revisiting it after you send it, the data. If, if, if Brian, yeah. if Brian is a, a true glutton for punishment, but I, I do want to say that, as far as I understand, Brian, and I'm not an expert on him, he comes from a libertarian wing of thought, and I think it would be a calumny. For you to in any way uh, uh, imply that where he's coming from is evidence of his own personal feel and it gay is, feeling. without a doubt, I he is sh- representing a certain conservative voice that he no. feels is being otherwise stifled. OK, in so let, let him society. let us speak up for him. There is zero oh, chance that okay, that is let him table. let him without interruption because it's important in today's day and age. For, allow him to do that. His let him, slant is so biased. Jesus Christ, Maron. Let him just say what he wants about <laughs> that thing and no one will. Go ahead. So the honest answer is I was just curious about this. I had written about this in my other book on human genetics. I read something on Wikipedia that was clearly wrong. And I just said, let's go and look at the data and talk about it. That's not something most people do. I agree. But that's what I do. Merit, merit. There are specific issues. I got curious about them. I want to talk about the numbers. And like a lot of what I do is specifically say, let's just not talk about any of the other distracting issues. Let's stay laser like focused on this issue at hand and not get upset because that I want to get to the truth. It's so ridiculous to not include Ma- gay rights in your may Ma- 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 uh, so That's not how I roll. Brian acknowledged I, I, it is I, I, Brian. I, I, Brian, I, 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 Brian acknowledged the possibility that the differences we're seeing statistically in the number of people identifying as gay and bisexual is simply because they're more comfortable identifying that way. Do you acknowledge the possibility? The possibility that one's sexuality could, can change because of society. Is that a possibility in your mind? Is there a possibility that one's sexuality can change? That, that, that one, yes. Is there a possibility that society it, and it can influence your sexuality? I, is that I, possible? Can I ask, I, I hate to answer a question. You, with a you, question. Almost, you don't answer any No, questions. no, no, here, the, Hooker, I've been so upfront. And then we got to like, get to Justin. Uh, do you think like uh, that if you were just force fed chocolate ice cream and you fucking hate chocolate ice right. cream, but you just kept being force fed chocolate ice cream, mm. which is absolutely not what's happening with homosexual. I okay. wish I was that being force fed like this. Risk. I wish. But if if that were the case, could you eventually be like, you know what? It won, it, it won my, over. My, my, fuck my, vanilla. My gut, fuck my, vanilla world. my gut is no, but I'm open to a statistic saying otherwise. Justin McKinney oh, is now a, I know why you booked me is for, a comic. Living in New Hampshire, New Hampshire. Uh, he comes from May and I, he's a big star there. I think I'm told you're a big star. in New Dude, Hampshire. I literally got sent today lawn signs at yes. a four way stop for my upcoming show this week in Bolton Borough, New Hampshire. <laughs> like I'm, I'm on lawn signs. <laughs> you know what they are, right? You mean like signs like, on the lawn? They look yeah, signs on the lawn. They look like you're running for office. Yeah, I know my that. face. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that's well, how up. big a theater you're really missing out. Big uh, bisexual population up there. I believe you me. But yeah. How I big a the- how big a theater can you <laughs> fill up in New Hampshire? I do uh, the biggest one I do is thirteen hundred seats. The cap and you can fill that on I, your I can fill that. Yeah. And then there's other ones, nine hundred seat theaters. I, I'll do a couple shows. And actually the Portsmouth Music Hall, I do four shows a year back four nights in a row and that's uh 900 seats well right. can i just add that sell selling out 1300 seats in new hampshire it's real i can't do the math is different than selling out 1300 seats in new york city and selling out 1300 seats in new york city is quite an accomplishment so that's that's serious he's a, well, he's a you're a true skilled he's a i've skilled been comedian. back there for a while working it and it's it's a you know it's, it's a lot of creating new material every year like the, there's a year in review i do in portsmouth that the, where, where i built it to four sold out shows every year it's a new show so it's a ton of work, but it's that's why they'll come back because I keep coming up with new material. So it's a tough bed. I'm not going to lie. I made this bed in a minute, but I am stressed. Well, shit. The, the, I, the, I am like I, I don't sleep nights. I panic. I, anxiety. I get all kinds of when maybe, you find yourself not sexuality. Sleeping. I'm I get it. No, when, I get when it. You find yourself not sleeping. Drive you right into a man's mouth. Are you thinking about men? <laughs> no. OK, <laughs> I no, you know. And it's funny because not to go back to what yeah. you guys are talking about. Oh, stay but stay I really, long enough, well, the night I it. met my wife, uh-huh. she was at a comedy club uh-huh. in uh, Massachusetts and she was with her gay friend, Danny, and they were 
debating whether or not I was straight or gay. And he swore I was gay for the longest time. He's, <laughs> he's totally gay. And it's like, that's how our relationship started. I'm from so Boston, kinda... by the way. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. Now, what that's about yourself do you think uh, comes across as gay? <sighs> mannerisms. I think that's what I said. I have mannerisms. I don't know. Like, what would you think? If you didn't no, tell I mean, me... it's like being expressive and on stage in and of itself, because men are sort of like marked by reticence, right? Like a lot of manhood and masculinity is based on how little you express, right? Your Clint Eastwoodness. So being a comedian, being on stage, being expressive and flamboyant, that is right off the bat. People are like, is he a fag? Right. So there's that. And then and, looking good, keeping it tight. And I think this guy, Danny, too, he's, you know, how do I say this? Like he, you know, when he meets, he thinks a lot of men are gay and they just don't come out. I think there's a lot of that going on. Right. Like, you know, do you do you do that? Oh, I mean, I, you meet I a could, man, you go, he's straight, but he's I totally name gay. Ten comedians who everyone okay. thinks are straight. Let's name. <laughs> Let's name one. Uh, <laughs> no I'll tell you after. Dan Natter. No. Uh, Justin. Uh, yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. Uh, can I can I talk briefly about uh, yes. the 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 investments that you have imprudent investments that you've made or do you not want me to discuss? let's talk about it because my story is a sad one financial uh, investments I, I comedy yes. well, we, all, <laughs> we, have an, we have an economist here like, so he can about 20 oh, about 20 helpful. years ago justin was red hot he was a young up-and-coming comedian he had a point he was just kind of ex-cop from maine with kind of this down home maine kind of quirkiness to him and the industry fell in love and offered him he made I don't know, half a million dollars in development deals, right? Something like that, more, whatever it was. Holy more shit. Than that. More than I, that. As, as a young, as a 20 yes. something. Now, yes. had he done the right thing, he could have probably yes. been set for life. Instead, somebody from a comedy club suggested he invested all in some penny stock or something. He lost every goddamn Is this penny. true? This is true. My story is a sad one. <laughs> Fuck. I, so when I came to New York in the late 90s, I got in at every club right, right down to the cellar. I passed here. I was I was I was in every other club. So I hardly ever came downtown because I was up at Dangerfields and Caroline yeah. and the strip. But yeah. instead of all I passed at every club, I got an agent, I got the deals. So confident. I could remember all the managers, uh, Dave Becky, Rory Rosegarden, Barry Katz, Bruce Hills up at Marty. They all took me to lunch, all wanted to manage me. My agent in LA, Ruth Ann Secunda, said, You don't need a manager, you'll save money. I'm gonna get you a deal. So I'm like, all right. So I said, no, no, no. Long story short, uh, all that money, a, a waiter at Dangerfields Comedy Club was a part time stockbroker. I slowly <laughs> gave him I gave him 10 grand at first. He made it 20. And I gave okay. him 30. He made it 60. I gave him 80. He made it 160. I had a, close to 800,000 on paper in 2000 when it all crashed. I didn't realize I owed capital gains from the stocks he was selling. So I had a hundred in cash. I go, oh, that's being smart. I had another hundred mutual funds. There were tech funds. Stuff. But anyway, lost it all. I ended up with $10,000. So on my move to LA, um, couldn't 2001, January, 2001. But just how did you lose it all? I mean, you, you sold, I mean, you can't, he it was went down to you actually had stocks that went down to zero. Yes. He, wow. Yes. They were going down to nothing. It was all the dot com stuff. I mean, AOL was my best stock. And that was if you remember AOL like sure. that. I mean, that was that was garbage. So I knew nothing about it. My dad at the time was a homeless alcoholic. He, so my dad was like, why didn't you ask me what to wow. do with the money? I'm like, you were living under a bridge. Right. So I had no one to ask, really didn't know what to do. Didn't buy real estate, which would have been just if I mm -hmm. would have bought my two and a half family in Astoria. I talked to the landlord about buying it and I just didn't pull the trigger because- Or just index the, funds, anything. In, index funds. If I was just, I was a complete moron. Well, I had a hundred grand with Charles Schwab, but that's what I had to take out to pay the IRS because wow. I owed them in capital gains. So cut to here I am at the top of the world, confident, everything was going great. I moved to LA in 01. I was so depressed. Like I, I squandered, my accountant said, there are people jumping out of buildings who didn't, I haven't seen this. Quite this literally. is the worst case yeah. I've seen. So when I got the Tonight Show with Leno in 02, I was so depressed when I did it. Like, I can't even watch it. Like, I, and he, it, it went okay. He had me back a second time two years later. But I was so depressed. Here I am in L.A. walking around. How did I, I – my whole plan just got blown up. Mm. So I clawed and clawed back by, like, 06, just as I started to come out. My wife's like, I want to be back in – I want to be back in New England. Right? So we, I moved back to New Hampshire in 06. Shit. So just as I started – so that's where I've been. I've been back in 06. Um, had bought a house. The place I bought in 06 in New Hampshire was the same price I could have bought my two and a half family in Astoria. Sure. But I had, and I had the money. I could have bought it cash. I could have mm -hmm. rented it to comedians. I would have been, you know, so anyway. So, yeah. So I think people, you know, didn't like I got the deals. All this guy got all this deal money. And then but knowing that I lost it all, I hope I made some friends back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
because well, it's, I, I think it's ruined my life to this day. Sure. To this, me being <laughs> here now, me calling Dan and Perriel and being like, hey, can I get on this podcast? I mean, me coming back to the city after 20 years ago, I left and I was like, uh, it's just mind boggling. So let me see if this make you feel any better. Brian, you're yes. an economist. So, oh, yes. I've always wondered, and I heard someone else mention it recently, if economists are so smart, how come they don't make a fortune in investments? And the main thing that economists who study financial markets will tell you is that they know how to avoid wasting their money on managers who don't know very much. Uh, the, you know, like the, you know, the, basic, you know, the basic model of the stock market comes down to this. If it was obvious what the stock market was going to do, then people would have already invested on the basis of that and moved it to where it's going to be anyway. So yeah, like the main thing that you, know, that you can really learn from studying it is that you shouldn't pay someone who claims to see the future a pile of money for what he knows, because otherwise he would have already invested in it and gotten rich himself. Uh, Shit. Now, so can, can, can I tell you a quick story? <laughs> yes, so, yeah. uh, just a quick story. And then I'll, I'll sh about investing. I had a fight with my, you know, the guy who handles my money. I don't know if he's a broker or whatever he is. And uh, I don't want to say the firm. And uh, it was when um, when COVID first hit and the market just crashed. And I called him. I said, listen, I want to put a big amount of money. Like for me, I want to put all this money into an index fund today. And he's like, well, no, I think you should dollar cost average, you know, split it out over. And I said, and I said, why would I dollar cost average? The market just dropped like almost 20 percent or something. He said, well, it's, it's wiser. And I said to him, I said, it's like if you're playing blackjack, of course, you play the odds. But if you're able to count cards, the odds have changed. The market has crashed by 15 or 20 percent. I'm counting cards here. I know my odds have changed. I, he said it can go down further. I said, I don't care if it goes down sure. further. It's going to definitely come way back up. And this guy fought tooth and nail to talk me out of it. Did you listen to him? No, I, yeah. I put a, 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 I put it all in in a, in a s index. SPY, s, you know, uh, an index fund. Yeah. Why, why do you even have this guy? You can do this yourself very easily. Well, and 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 of course, it it it's doubled since then. Mm -hmm. And the, um, one, the one thing is fair to say is that the stock market over the long term always gets higher. Well, especially, but if you and and my new theory on on investing is simply cuz when you get old enough you see this every so often in your life the market has a thing where it drops by like 10 or 15%. Yeah, sure. Just wait for those days and go all in. Don't worry if it goes down further and then don't invest the rest of the time. That's my but I, but, by all, like a genius, but by all <laughs> but by all in. But by all in you mean all in on a diverse portfolio. Yeah, in internet in the index. Not yeah. all in on on Apple, uh, no, yeah, on tech stock, stock. on Toys R Us, not picking but, and choosing. Okay, you wanted to say something. Now you, well, also you want to plug your, you have a special. Uh... That's really not important. Okay. Why? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yes, it's coming out. Is it September, September 1st, 1st on YouTube? Yes, my fifth one hour. By the way, I've done it. Uh, I did Comedy Central's. I've done it there. It's on Prime. This one I'm going to YouTube. It's what the, the kids are telling me. It sure is the way to go. I'm always behind the curve on everything. But here's my point. Um, so this stockbroker. Here I am walking around in L.A. It's sunny. I'm depressed. I'm like, I don't even want it. I mean, I just want to die in my sleep. Mm. Right. It's not yeah. good. He reaches out to me and he goes after two or three years, he goes, hey, uh, Dan here. I won't say his last name. Dan here. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, man? He goes, hey, want to tell you about a lot of good things going on right now. Got a lot of good leads on some stuff that's really starting to move. I'm like, Dan, I got no more money. <laughs> I go, you lost. I lost <laughs> over half a million dollars. He goes, yeah, that was a tough stretch. <laughs> that was, goes, I, I had a rough too. I moved back in with my grandmother. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, this is what he's telling me. Yeah. And I used to say that he went from my, uh, my stock broker to my broke stalker. Cause he's showing up at shows <laughs> and trying to get me to invest money. And it's like, it's just, but uh, uh, brutal to this day. Natterman, when did you move back in with your grandmother? No, I wasn't the stock broker. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't. No. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, that's a depressing story. <laughs> but anyway, look, I'm here. Thank you for the opportunity. But he got, of course, but what, what, you. what possessed you? Was it, to to you had enough money that like you could have you were in really good shape. Was it greed or somebody told me you were desperate to help out your family? And that's exactly. what exactly I'm yeah. surprised you were told that. That's yeah. exactly what I was just going to say. And it made someone perfect sense to me. Yeah, that's I forgot exactly. who said it, but I'm like, why would he be that stupid? And I, he said, no, his family was so fucked up. Yeah. And he and he he was like, I can't help my family with yeah. five hundred thousand, no, but okay. I can help my family with two million. My uh, my mom died when I was six. My dad was a homeless alcoholic. My brothers, you know, we were all left. So my thinking was literally, he, I'll never forget the broker said to me, I'm going to have you at seven figures. Is that a million? Seven yeah, figures. Yeah. Seven, mm. figures, seven figures by the end of the year. And no, I was yeah, So I'm literally looking at it going, wow, 
I don't, this stand up thing doesn't even have to, I could be okay and take care of my family, even if the stand up thing doesn't, you know, blow up. So um, that was kind of the thinking behind it. And it's and seven this, figures oh. to the left of the decimal point. But here's, can I tell you, this is a sad moment. This is true. Yeah. I, my, my brother, my oldest brother had a child. Colin. And I was like, I remember thinking I'm going to pay for their college. I wanted to pay for their college. So it's going up. My plan was to pay for their college cut to 22 years later. He lives in, in the Upper West Side. I just had to sleep in his on his couch <laughs> at, in his apartment. Like I'm crashing with him. Not only did I not pay for with his the college, kid. but I'm crashing. Actually, he let me have the bedroom. He was out on the couch because he felt bad for me. But that's how like that's the reality. But yes, it was. There was that. And that made perfect sense. Wanting to help my family. It, it was it was not greed. It was just like, I can't help my family with five hundred thousand. But with two million, I can. Yeah, it was it was that was the that. thinking behind. I always thought I'd take care of my family. And I and I my sister in law would say like, yo, once Justin makes it big, well, you know, there was this pressure of once he makes it big, once he ma everyone's been waiting for me to make it big. Like mm. a, a lot of, you know, you know what it's like. Dan, a lot of pressure. Right, so, got, so, got, so, so, but you seem, to be, you seem to be—you seem to be in good spirits now. I'm in good spirits because I got this opportunity today. Yes, and and, <laughs> and you've got a good. I'm story. so sorry that I like sucked the air out of. The so, room. so I, I had um, Modi. By the way, would have taken that money, put it into real estate, oh, and he would be. Should have talked to Modi. Yeah. I know Modi. Yes. Uh, we just never mind. Um, I, I had always wanted to have a podcast called The Third Rail. Uh huh. I don't know if that's been taken already, where yeah. where we would actually only discuss these issues that um, are volatile, are vo volatile and uh, emotional, and they're not allowed to talk about. Mm. You might run out and, uh, after a few episodes, though. Maybe. Th no, but uh, and um, and I and I would like to do shows like that, including maybe to revisit the sexuality I totally would. In one day. But we have to figure out ground rules um, uh, to to run it. In including, I think, an exchange of sources and data prior Absolutely. to the shows, because one of the things that happens is that people just, it happens on Rogan all the time. They just throw up, well, did you see that study, blah, 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 no. blah, and it may or may not be valid. I, I really do. My background really is in, in public health and public health um, research. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't come here with, with like, uh, and, Trumpian, pull it out of my ass dog shit. Do you know I have I mean? to. Yeah, but, but, I, I have a show. For some reason, we're doing a 6 p.m. show tonight. I don't know why. For the I, money. <laughs> no, but I, I know we did 6 p.m. shows on Wednesday, so I have to be on stage. No, this is a special uh, thing that the. Uh, so the, should we, the should we wrap it up, Brian? Content. I hope you enjoyed a discussion with Justin, even though it, ah, it's a little sad. I'm sorry. You might feel better about yourself. I know it was actually it's but, not sad. It's a triumph let, because you. So let me just say you 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 pulled through. In, in conclusion, end. Brian, the only person who I heard a negative word about your set from was Mayron. Mm. That is a God's honest truth. Uh, oh, you should have stood I, back with the comics. No, no, <laughs> that's not true. Because I spoke to him and I, and I spoke Ooh. to Liz and I watched to Liz. You spoke to and, Liz. Yes, I did. And she lied to you. Maybe she lied to you. Okay. No, I, I, I can show you everything. So, um, you know, if, if you have the balls to do it again, you know, please feel free. And and uh, and I would like to then maybe sit down and have a coffee. In with, person, it'd be lovely. A coffee with you and Mayron. And uh, try to um, see each other face to face because that always seems to it melt. It does work better. That always seems to melt uh, uh, issues like this. Uh, I think everybody here is of good intentions, and I don't think there's any bigots among us, which is uh, yeah, they run most important super, thing. They run was super cool on comedy night. To put me at ease. Uh, so yeah, and there. and um, and I certainly. Well, I, was gonna, I was gonna say we may not disagree. We may not agree about this. Actually, I think we do agree. Mm. I think that you hold my position. I think that you just don't want to. You know, like there's there's something about what I've said. I, it doesn't seem like he holds your position. Maron is fairly convinced. Let not finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I have to. Ha somebody has to corral these. Uh, <laughs> dogies. Go ahead, Brian. Finish your thought. I was thinking, this is not a case of we may disagree. I think Mayron and I actually, in fact, agree. You're wrong. There's something about the tone of what I said that he doesn't like, but in terms of the substance, I think we agree. Right. Well, it seems to me Mayron is convinced that there is absolutely no way uh, that 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 sexuality is determined. I, I from, think it, I think the from article birth written and in bad nothing, faith. I don't nothing trust in, you. I, <laughs> Mayron, Mayron is it, but, but this is how gay people are, right? Oh, eat shit, <laughs> Noah. Uh, please. My my position is is oh, my position is is I'm uh, I I it, it you know I don't think we've solved the mystery today i think sexuality might be determined from birth it might not be but if anyone uh, wants to try I, well, being by with me i mean the uh, mouth is open
Um, and I'll stick my I, neck out and say we have the best evidence we're ever going to get on this just from identical twins are not identical in their sexual orientation. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, we'll continue. All the way from Israel. Well, I don't like when people continue without me, but <laughs> but but, but if you have to, you have to. So fast. But no just fast. Justin's a special. I just want to make sure we get the proper plug coming out September first, eight p.m. Uh, on YouTube, my YouTube channel. On his YouTube uh-huh. channel, Thanks. I will. I'll be like my wife. You guys continue, continue the discussion <laughs> as long as you wish. I think it's a little disrespectful. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Be have a great May. show, Dan. Uh, oh, bye-bye. 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 So go ahead, Perry. I'll say what you want to say, then we'll wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you're sure that the woman you were talking about became a lesbian before she was with you or after. As a direct result. I knew you were. I, I knew <laughs> there was. A, I, I was going to take a hit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can introduce you to her. We're still friends today. Uh, all right. Anybody? Anybody else want to say anything? Uh, no, I, I honestly, I'm I'm really grateful and for the opportunity to have this conversation. And Brian, I think it was super cool that you showed up and you were like able to participate in this because I really was coming in with a. Uh, I came in hot. This, but this is not over. Oh, it's not over <laughs> you. That's the Maron I want to see. It's who I am, you motherfucker. I would <laughs> love to have this again, and over That's coffee good. and uh, tickling, light tickling. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Brian, you're, you're a hell of a, a, a sport, a hell of a sport and a, and a ballsy guy. Honestly, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good job.